One of the most disturbing things Lou Elizondo studied at the Pentagon were reports of close encounters with UFOs. The cases are controversial, but armed forces personnel swear they not only happened, but caused lasting physical and psychological effects. If real, Elizondo considers these effects a kind of sixth observable. This first account happened over 40 years ago. My name's Mario Woods. I served in the Air Force from 1975 to 1983, and I was in security police. In 1977, I was a team member on a security response team at Ellsworth Air Force Base in South Dakota. During the Cold War, Ellsworth Air Force Base formed a key part of the so-called Northern Tier Defense System, operating hundreds of nuclear-tipped Minuteman intercontinental ballistic missiles. I guess it was about uh, 10, 30, quarter to 11 on this particular night. And then that's when we got a call from the launch control officers that November 5 had alarmed, and it was a SIT-4, which was a serious alarm. It means that exterior alarms penetrated. I told my team leader, Michael Johnson, Mario Woods and his team leader were ordered to investigate the disturbance at a missile silo, codenamed November 5. So immediately we are dispatched. As we go to Highway 79, the entire atmosphere was just lit up. It was just super bright, like the sun was rising. And as we rounded the bend, this object was sitting over November 5, about five, 10 feet off the ground, max. And it was just huge. It's as big as any Walmart building I've ever seen. The atmosphere in the truck got really, really thick, like couldn't breathe. It was a round sphere, and on that sphere, it looked like the exterior of it was gaseous, and the colors were floating around it. It wasn't a craft like with hard edges or anything like that. It was completely round. The object hovering over the nuclear missile silo appeared to be exhibiting one of the five observables anti-gravity, the ability to fly without visible means of propulsion. You know, when I was at ATIP, we, we were under the presumption that there was definitely a nuclear connection. Are we once again seeing some sort of connection between UAP activity and our nuclear capabilities along the northern tier? My partner, Michael Johnson, he was just frozen to the wheel looking straight ahead out that windshield. And I kept hollering at him, Michael, Michael. And he didn't answer me. I took my mag light and I pulled myself out on the windowsill of that truck. And I flashed my mag light at this thing. But as soon as I did that, the pressure stopped. It was like, OK, you can breathe now. And I remember slumping back down into the seat. Then I remember just blacking out. And that's the last thing that I remember. until that radio came back to life. And all I heard was a wing security control, November 1. That was us, our call sign. And I heard it three or four times. And I turned to Michael Johnson, I said, you're gonna get that? And he's still just frozen in his position. And I couldn't figure it out, because there was a wall right here. And it went up as far as I could see. And it was the backside of, a, of Lake Newell Reservoir. We went from November 5 to Newell Lake. And that's between five and seven and a half miles. There were no tire prints or anything. It was just our vehicle in the middle of the mud. And it started to get light. Wood says they had lost several hours, an unexplained gap in time where they had no memory of where they were or what was happening to them. So when I got back on the radio, I told WSC that there's, I'm spot a white wall. So they said, Continue to talk. We're triangulating your location. Maybe 20 minutes passed. So this backup alert team came. And I said, I don't know where I am. I don't know where we are. And don't know how we got here. I said, what's happened? He goes, I can't talk to you about it. Just stay right there. So I kept trying to communicate with Michael Johnson. He wouldn't answer me in any way. He was just frozen in this position, looking straight ahead. I had to have another guy help me slide him over to the passenger seat and seat belted him in. 
Woods and his partner were relieved of their weapons and told to follow the backup alert team to the main base. We were taken directly to the wing commander's office. And then the wing commander said, um, Sergeant Woods said, I need to ask you what happened out there. I told him what had happened, and he asked me to describe the size of it. He goes, do you have any idea how you got to where you were? I said, no, sir. He said, we're going to send you over to the base hospital. We, we have a doctor who wants to take a look at you, and we just make sure that you're all right. The doctor examined my eyes, my ears, nose, all that stuff. He says, I need to take a skin sample. And I said, why a skin sample? He says, because you, you have some burns on you. I think most everybody is aware of the five observables. But we looked at other things, and that six observable was biological effects. And they can be anything from subtle to severe. I was burned on my face and on my hand. And the items that they used to take the skin samples, they went right into a vial about that big, and they put a cork on top of them. And then they were laying on a silver tray. Two weeks later, Michael Johnson showed up at Wood's door. He said, man, what did you see? What, did, what do you remember? And I, tried, I went through everything that I had, that I knew. And then he described it too. He said he was scared to death. We thought we'd talk about it further, but that was the last time I ever saw him. I've been trying to find him ever since. Elizondo says he's cataloged reports of burns in other close encounters. There are key data points that we can measure to determine if there are indeed biological effects. It's no different than if I were to stand behind the jet engine of a 747 at takeoff, chances are I'm going to get burned. These are level-headed, patriotic people who serve their country. I've seen some data that suggests in some cases there are real physical effects that warrant some attention. The results of the tests on Woods' skin samples were never shared with him. And what Woods reveals next deepens the mystery of these close encounters. Woods decided to undergo hypnosis to see if he could recover any memories from the four hours he lost during the experience. Just all seemed to be like a dream until the next thing I know I came to. And of course, four hours had gone by. The incident has left Woods with mental scars that have yet to heal. It changed everything, and it still does to this day.